I grew up on a farm in Ohio, and my interest in animals came in. My father's a retired veterinarian. My mother worked for him, so I helped uh, do surgeries, the things around the office. When I went to university, I wasn't exactly sure what I wanted to do, so the first summer that I had, I was introduced to marine biology, marine life, that kind of thing. I kind of fell in love with the water and, and working with fish. Salmon farming for Nova Scotia and New Brunswick means about $356 million yearly. That translates to around 300 million meals of Atlantic salmon. And a lot of people, when they think about fish farming, they think about fish farmers and hatcheries and processing plants, but there are also engineers and scientists and fish health technicians and all kinds of different employment that surrounds having salmon farming in New Brunswick. Our industry partner, Northern Harvest Sea Farms, has chosen specific traits that are most important to them. So traits like growth and resistance to bacterial kidney disease and resistance to sea lice and fillet quality traits such as uh, a redder fillet. Today, you know, unlike years past, we know that we have to put a good quality product in the water. That's the first thing to start with. So if you put a good product in, you'll probably get a good product out. In the past, you would have gone into a sea cage and maybe selected some of the biggest fish and crossed those fish together and created the next generation of production fish. But when you're doing that blindly, you may be crossing brothers and sisters and you have no idea. So we've done a lot of work to make sure that the fish that we're putting in the water are fish that we're not going to have problems with, that you know are gonna to grow to be good, healthy, good quality salmon. So the fish are coming out of an individual family tank and once the fish comes out of the tank, the fish is then anesthetized and uh, so it's calmed down and then it goes to fill and fill is uh, measuring the weight and the length of the fish and recording any abnormalities. If the fish is not deformed, then it goes to Janie. Janie makes a small incision in the fish and inserts an RFID tag, similar to what you put into a dog or a cat to be able to identify the individual fish. Those fish are then used for disease challenges, sea lice challenges, any types of challenges that we're doing because we want to know the complete performance of a family. Specific Atlantic salmon might produce a different um, mucus that maybe is a deterrent to sea lice, just like if you were sitting around a campfire and your friend gets bit by 15 mosquitoes and you don't get bit by any mosquitoes. So with bacterial kidney disease, we inject every fish with BKD and then we basically track survival. And so what we'll find is some families have no mortality at all. Other families have a lot of mortality, maybe the entire family. So we use the family information to help us select fish as elite broodstock. So we're at Northern Harvest Sea Farms processing plant. And here we have several salmon fillets set up. Part of what we're looking at within the Atlantic Salmon Broodstock Program is fillet quality. Consumers buy with their eyes a lot of times. So the, lar you know, the darker that color in the flesh, the better that quality looks to that consumer. So we're gonna see consumer that would prefer to have a nice bright dark red color. It's not a taste issue. It's not an issue that way, but we are looking at melanin pigmentation and whether or not we can see a difference between families. Melanin pigment is a, it's a sort of a grayish color that's a, that is in the fillet itself. They might become pieces or parts, but uh, they're not something that can go to a grocery store, for example, and be packaged because no one's gonna wanna buy that package of fish. The Northern Harvest has very high standards, so if that fish doesn't meet our standard, you know, we will lose considerable money on that product. Anytime we can reduce the occurrence of downgrading in our industry, it costs the industry millions of dollars every year. Some downgraded product will go as seconds and will be sold as seconds. Uh, just like a lot of companies do. Some companies, um, you know, will buy it for pet food, that type of thing, depending on the nature of the downgrade. So with the Atlantic Salmon Broodstock Program, it's our job to make a better end product that can be sold so the company can, can grow. My ultimate dream is to help companies become more sustainable for different fish species, for mollusks, 
species. You could do broodstock programs using mussels, oysters, every kind, every species can have a broodstock program.